How you doing, buddy? Brought you your favorite candies. I'm doing this because of the requests of millions of people that never leave me alone about it. You know, I mean, my Twitter is just like, you know, there's five tweets about something else and like three tweets about Dumb and Dumber. You know, they want to see it, you know, so it, it just de definitely got inside people and became a part of their lives. I was in for the sequel when the Farrelly's and Jim said they wanted to do it, finally. and and. Uh, uh, but they said, we really want to do it. We want this one to be better than the first one, and that's going to take some time. And um, so they took the time on the script. There were at least five drafts, maybe six, and just trying to live up to ourselves. When we started Dumb and Dumber 2, we didn't want to make a movie that was like Dumb and Dumber light. You know, Dumb and Dumber was our first movie and one we're very proud of and, and it stuck around, and we didn't want to make one that, that like, you know, lessened it in any way. And uh, so we knew the bar was set high and we took a long, long time working on that script. Come on, Lloyd, you gotta get over her. Mary Samsonite was just a girl. <laughs> That's it, kid. Come on, come on, come on, spit it out. God, yeah! <laughs> Wait a minute, so you mean you have been faking for 20 years mm -hmm. and it was all for a gag? Yep. That's. Awesome! <laughs> oh, oh, why don't you roll me inside? We'll get the nurse to take the catheter out of me. We don't need nurses for that. But don't you have to... It picks up, I'm going to say, 20 years later. We're middle-aged and still that stupid. We've changed physically, but mentally we have not gained a day. They kind of they pick up uh, finding out that, that Harry needs a kidney to survive. And, and then they find out that he might have had a child. And so instead of the obvious uh, choice of looking for that child so that you, you can make a soul connection for the rest of your life and, and, uh, and have that family feeling, uh, they're focused on really getting that kidney. I like what you've done with the place. Who's this? Oh, that's Butthole. I found him out in the alley. Why'd you name him Butthole? Who's hey, this? Oh, yeah. Good name. Totally fits. Looking back on it, we... Uh... There was an innocence to Harry and Lloyd. It was never mean. It was never violent, unless it was to each other, physically, boom, then we, you know. But it was never, there wasn't an edge to it. We weren't going after any particular group of people. We were just stupid. The beauty of the characters is, like real friends, when it comes to a woman, you know, you, there's no rules, man. You know, we're gonna screw each other completely, you know, and that's the fun of it. It's like we, you know, my character is so insanely selfish that it's so much fun to play, to always make the selfish choice. The thing that I think people take away besides the laughs is the love for these, that these two guys have for, for each other. Despite the fact that they're constantly trying to mess each, with each other and screw each other over, they really care about each other and they have big hearts and uh, and on top of that, they're all they have. The postcard from Freda Felcher. Harry, I'm pregnant. Please call me. What do you think it means, Harry? Lloyd, I'm going to be a dad. Ah! Look at the postmark. 1991. I had a daughter. I gave her up for adoption. Well, what if we go track her down? You're hot for my daughter. What? Am I right? Daughter. What? Am I right? When you're in a movie with Jim Carrey, you follow. You know, because the Jim's mind, his creative genius is, it's unique. It's like all those guys, you know, it's like Peter Sellers or Jonathan Winters or Robin or all those guys. It's uniquely their own. Only Jim Carrey would think to do it this way. And so, smartly, I'd made Harry follow Lloyd. You know, where are we going now? So there's always like a second, a half second delay on whatever Lloyd was getting me to do next. Jeff, by the way, is so much fun to play with because he'll go there. He's totally committed, you know, he gets it, the fact that a movie like this is not about talking about what happens, you know, it's about setting up things and, and playing them out to the fullest to where an audience goes, I can't believe they're doing that. They're fun guys to write for, but it's the two actors, it's, it's, it's Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels, two great actors who kind of come from different, different, you know, genres of the acting fields, you know, Jeff is such a, a serious actor, such a, you know, a, an accomplished 
you know, stage actor and all that. And Jim is, you know, such a brilliant comedian. They come from different areas, but they, they make each other better. And those two guys just bring our two characters, Harry and Lloyd, to life in ways that uh, any writer, director, just, you know, you would, you'd pray for. <laughs> I like a lot. Oh, check out the hotties at 12 o'clock. That's three hours away. Why can't I check them out now?